Okay, so we're going to look at this sheet drawing. Okay, so there are six sheets. Could be as few as three or four, or could be eight, depending on how big your map is. So go ahead and shut that door. It's noisy. All right, so first sheet. These are 18 by 26. Okay. First sheet has your overview map and your sheet index and your vicinity map. Okay, this should not be on here. Purpose of the survey, summary of field work. Okay. Little this is common to every sheet. It's got your date, your drawing path, your your job number. Same thing up here. Okay. What I what I would like on sheet one, so this that this isn't a good example. We don't have a good example yet of what's in model space, so ignore the model space for a minute. What I really would like on this sheet, on this overview sheet, is the subject parcel, the adjoiner parcels, tax assessor info, owner name, vesting deed on each of the parcels, and labels for the survey maps that are in the vicinity. Okay? And if we've tied out to some geodetic control or city benchmarks, we can show those on this sheet. So this is like, you look at this sheet, you get a rough idea of where you're at and what parcels we're dealing with. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So that's this first sheet. Okay, the next two sheets are your, map, your actual map. It's just like a record of survey. Okay, so we're showing found mons, set mons, search areas where we didn't find anything, measured versus record, distances, angles. Okay, put your basis of bearing down here, your unit system, your map projection. I will help you guys with these notes, right, until you learn what they are. Okay, and then this is your map view. You know, if you need another sheet, we got two sheets. You can have up, you know, however many you need. Okay, what I would recommend is when you guys are working on this with me, you, you come and have me help you with the sheet layout or get an idea of what you think the sheet, sheet layout needs to be in them. Come get me, because getting the sheet layout right is 90% of not having to redo stuff. Okay, so you got your map sheets. Okay, then we have two tables, two sheets for tables. So this is the first table sheet is basically what do we find and what do we look for. Okay, found monument <clears throat> point number northing easting the reference stock short description of what we found. Okay, same thing for search area point number rough northing easting what were we dock were we looking at and. I want to know why didn't we find it underneath a car in a briar patch blown out by a block wall whatever that goes in here okay the reason this is so important is if we don't write down that we look for it and somebody else comes behind us and they don't know if we look for it and it's a controlling corner what will they do if they're a good surveyor look for it find it they'll go look for it and so like if we know it's not there and we already looked for it we need to let somebody know that so otherwise they're right? wasting their time yeah or if we didn't look for it he needs to know that mm -hmm. okay or she could be a she all right, so then we got some notes in here. So this is any, any, any extra information you want to provide about the foul monuments. Same thing for search areas. You know, like this is stuff like, hey, they were having the um, farmer's market when we were out, and so cars were everywhere. <laughs> I don't know, whatever I need to know. There might not be anything here. That's okay. If there's nothing to say, you just edit this text and say no additional notes. Okay, we're going to talk about these in a minute, but these are specific notes about specific monuments. Okay, second table, boundary resolution notes. They have a certain symbol that should not see, say SN, it's just BBR, so I need to fix that. Same thing, easements, if we map easements. Okay, these symbols are key to a symbol that looks like this on the map view. So you see that symbol, you run over here to this table, and it's going to give you, you know, how, why we picked, held that as the section corner or whatever. Okay. You guys will get these notes from me, right, or Matt, okay, as you guys are learning how to do this. Okay. Okay, this is the last thing, this note sheet. There might be two, but we'll start with one. These are standard set of notes. Identify the subject parcel. Tell me about the vesting deed, the land description in the vesting deed. Tell me about the land description in the adjoiner deeds. Tell me the order that you resolve the boundary in. I want to know about any adjacent right away. How do we establish that? What, how do we come up with the widths? Okay. So if you go into this folder, 
K. Now I'm lost. Sorry, Cher. Landon. Templates and standards. Boundary. There is a template in here. Please do not overwrite this. Boundary resolution notes. Every time we do a boundary survey, we should fill out the same set of notes. Okay? What's the subject parcel? What are we surveying? You can't survey something unless you understand what the deed says. So tell me about the deed. What document is it in? Is it a quick claim? Is it a patent? Is it a grant deed? Who's it from? Who's it to? Right? When did it get recorded? Yada, yada, yada. Tell me the order that you resolve the boundary in. Okay? Controlling surveys. Those are surveys that define our parcel. Okay? So they're usually creating subdivision maps. I want to know about them. Sometimes there's more than one. Right? So what's the number? Who surveyed it? When did it get surveyed? What does it show? This is a high level summary, right? I don't need all the details here. I can go get the map. This is, you know, Will's doing a peer review on Matt's boundary resolution. He wants to skim through this and save himself five hours, right? Okay, same thing. We're tracing surveys. We're going to walk through each one of those. Okay. Where is it filed? Who did it? When was it done? What does it show? Why is it important to us? Read through this is a really good example of what I'm looking for in here. Okay. 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 Original property corner monuments. Those are set on a controlling map. I need to know, did we find any? Retracing monuments, those are set on a non-controlling map, but they mark our line. Okay, sometimes we want, you know, we got center line monuments, we want to talk about those. Those are kind of special. Okay, so really, every time we do a boundary survey, this should get filled out. Okay, you fill this out first, then you go in and do your drawing and add all those notes. Okay, so this is not the work product, the work product is the notes. Okay, most of the time you will need my help to do these notes, and that's okay. Part of what this does, Part of what this, filling out these notes, what this does is it, it makes me, this is also partly a process through which I am going to do a double check. So if, if Matt's put the boundary together, but I got to sit down with him and fill these notes out, right? Or he fills these notes out and brings them to me and I got to read them and correct them. That's forcing me to look at what he did, right? Because if you just send me a drawing with some lines in it, I'm going to look at that and go, oh yeah, it looks good. Send it. Go ahead, send that to the engineer, right? And I don't really understand how we do what we were supposed to do, okay? So, my ideal world, every time we do a boundary survey, we go into a drawing, we go into a job folder, you go into the boundary job folder, and this is PDF, and there's a set of sheets there, okay? And any LS ought to be able to, in an hour or less, on most boundaries, get a good feel for what we did and if we did a good job or not, okay? What Elena is going to work on with me later this week, and maybe Matt too, depends on schedule, is we're going to set up a little project GIS and QGIS, and you're going to click on the little dot for the project, and it's either going to link directly to this PDF or it's going to give you the folder, right? So you'll be able to pull up a map of every boundary survey Elena's ever done in the Bay Area, click the dot, and have these sheets, boom, right there. What do we find? What do we do? Okay? You have no idea how much time this would save me if other people would do this, right? It'd save a huge amount of time. Stay wide, GIS. Stay wide for your time. Okay, so now we're going to look at the field drawing. So now that you have that overview, what I want, what, what we're going to do is Matt's going to attempt this on 3514 Oak Knoll. That's Julian Julian's going to attempt it on Matilda. Okay, and what I might do is, Matt, I might let you help Julian with the notes a little bit on Matilda. Um, and then you guys can come and get me when you need me. Okay. That learning the notes is the hardest part, and uh, you can ask Mike Dorsey. I used to make him do this, and he hated it, but it's good. That's how you're going to be in LS is learn how to write those notes. Um, and I don't mind, as we get busier, you guys can write the notes, and Elena can put the drawings together. Because that's just, once she has the notes, this is a drafting exercise, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's just already and, sitting in there in a Word file. And they're all going to look the same. Same line types, same line weights, same symbols, same everything. Like, we're going to get to the point where we ought to be able to just, we're going to be like a factory. And those things just get cranked out. Like, Elena's going to be like, all right, I want to do something different because I can do these in my sleep. Yeah. Right? That's the goal. Okay. So, the field drawing is set up in a very similar way. So, let's go look at that. That's the other thing I want to teach you guys. So, remember now, unless we're only doing a topo, every job 
So no matter what, every job we do here gets a field drawing. If we, if we are in the field, it gets a field drawing. If we do anything on a boundary, it gets a boundary drawing, no matter what. Okay. Okay, so let's go look at the field drawing because those are the two drawings we should have on every mapping project. So if you go into the same spot and go into field, okay, and here it is right here. It's called field. Okay, same type of same type of drawing. Okay, on this one I don't think we need a base file because this is only for us. This never gets shared. Okay, the drawing never gets shared. We might share the PDF, but the, but we never share this drawing. Okay, so let me explain the purpose of the field drawing. So this is always in the, you would think it would be in the field folder, the F folder, it's not. We put it in, the, do we put it in the F? That's where I put it, you don't have the designation. Okay, so we'll put it in the F for now, that's fine. That's where I've been seeing it. It could be in the control folder too, but we'll leave it in F. So here's the purpose of the field drawing. The field drawing, the whole purpose of the field drawing is to quickly answer three questions. What field work has been done on the project? Question number one. Number two, what is our unit system and coordinate system for the project? Right? Are we on assumed? Are we state plane? Are we something else? And how did we establish that in the, on the, you know, how did we establish that on the ground? We had to tie out to some monuments somehow. Okay, so what's our, what's our controlling, What's our control monuments? What's our benchmark? Okay. So, what field work has been done? What's our control coordinate system? And then the last thing is, what control points are on the ground? Okay. Those are the three questions. And here's what we should be able to do on any job. We ought to be able to print this PDF out and hand it to a field crew. They ought to be able to walk to the job site, find the control, and start work. Because right now, you inherit a job around here and like, good luck, right? Look at all that work we did out at, at Sunnyvale and we didn't know what the benchmark was. We didn't know where the control on the site was. We're trying to scrounge through field notes. I guess it's a nightmare, okay? So let's look at how this is set up. Okay, so always get an aerial background, even if it's just being maps. Hopefully most of what we do will have a UAV ortho in it, okay? And in, the only thing that goes in here in this drawing as a general rule is the aerial background and the control points. That's it. There's a specific style in here. As long as your control points are numbered in the right range, this will they automatically get picked up by this point group and they get this style. Point number, description, northern easting Z. Plots right on this label. Okay? So that's the only thing in model space is this image, the control points, and then these two tables, which we'll look at in a minute, okay? So, five sheets, four sheets, could be as little as four, you know, could be eight, but, okay? Map sheet, that's all there is. Area background and the points, pretty simple. So in this one I had two, because they wouldn't all fit on one. Okay, it'd be nice if we had some road names on here. Yeah, I was about to say that. Right, so that we should have a layer in model space and throw some road names on or some landmarks. Okay, all right, field survey table. This information usually comes out of TBC. All I'm trying to do is show people what has been done in the field in sequential order. This is really, 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 really valuable if you're trying to figure crap out on a project. Okay, so let's just look at the example. Steve Smith was out on October 30th. I was the project surveyor, okay? He was doing a boundary field survey, okay? No, he wasn't, that's wrong. Here's what he was doing. He did a design tope on adjacent street frontage. Two day field survey started on this date, ended on this date, okay? This is supposed to have his control points numbers, but it doesn't. His last point number used because I was a slacker and I didn't fill it out, okay? And then every time they go out, I wanna know what happened with the control. Did they set new points? Did they recover existing control? Was some of the existing control destroyed or disturbed? That should all go on here. If we were keeping doing a good job of this, we would not be having the problems we're having on New Waiver right now. Okay. Every time they go out, 
it's not every day, but every time they go out with a task, right? You add a row to the table. That's how it's supposed to work. We are not doing a good job of this right now, okay? But really, when we're done with TBC, we've done our checks on the raw data in TBC, okay? And we've exported the points. The very next thing we should do is go in and update the field drawing. That means you add the new control points, take out the ones that were destroyed, update this table, okay? Most of the time, you guys can fill this out. You don't need my help to fill this out, right? You know what we were doing. And like, if you're not sure, you go get the field package. That's why I do field packages. You go get the field package. That'll tell you why they were out there, what they were doing, who, you know, that, who the chief was. That'll tell you all that. Okay. All right. So next, I've got a really simple table here that just lists all the control points. Okay. This is an automated point table. It just populates. Okay. What this means is if they've set new control on the job, you need to separate that out in this separate CSV file and import it into this drawing. As long as they're using the right point number range, it'll drop right into the right point group of this table will auto-update. Now, the only problem with that is the descriptions our crews use for the control points suck. So really, what you need to do, like see this right here? BKS check 100, that's no bueno, dude. What I really want that to say is, that, that, that shouldn't even be in here, probably. No, that's 100. So what it should say is, do I know what this is? What monument that is? No, so that's a bad description. I don't know what that is. It's something. It's a pipe or a cut cross or a nail, right? So what I'm telling you is, like, what, what about this? Right? Like, I don't want to see 304 WP. That's bull crap, right? Like, all I want to know, cut X where? Cut X, northwest corner of the intersection of blah, blah, something, right? Okay, so my point is you got to go in and clean up the descriptions that are coming out of the cruise data collector. Okay. Okay, this is the last sheet. Give me some notes on the control. So right here is an example. Original survey was performed on an unknown B by an unknown BKF team on an assumed local coordinate reference system. The vertical datum is also unknown. Sweet. Good times. <laughs> but at least that tells me something. Right? Or, so Matilda would say, you know, original control survey performed by Matt Holmes and Landon Blake from BK of Lathrop office, right? Horizontal control is based on California State Plain coordinates, NGS course, vertical datum is Santa Clara Valley Water District, two benchmarks were tied. Okay? Okay, right down here you tell me are we ground or grid? If we're grid, scale point, Scale point elevation, mapping angle. We get all that out of TBC. I can show you how to run the report. Okay, then over here you got to tell me what's our datum, what's our reference document, reference marks, what's our map projection. We're almost always survey feet. Same thing for the vertical datum. Elena, it's okay if you don't know what any of this is. All right. Okay, so what we'll now, what we'll do. Yeah, so well, you guys got to learn, right? So the point is if you get into every time we start a project, you, one of you guys should be sitting down with me to fill this out. Say, hey, Landon, I need to, um, I need to set up the field drawing. I don't know what our vertical datum is, right? And then I'm gonna, and then you know what I'm gonna say? I don't know what our vertical datum is either. And then you have to make me sit down and think about it. And I'm not like, all right, what would we do here, right? Okay. Now sometimes Matt will be able to. If Matt has, if it's a project that Matt started from scratch with me, Matt will know the answers. If it's or a, if it's a datum question or a, a mon uh, monument question, things like that, I can help. If it's a brand new, if, if it's not a brand new project, if it's an existing legacy project, yeah. like then it's a disaster, and we got to figure it out. Okay. All right. So that's all there is to a field drawing. Sweet. This gets PDF. It gets plotted to PDF just like the boundary drawing. Okay. Now here's what I really want. In the binders that we do, there's a tab. There's a field tab, and there's a boundary tab. This should get plotted to 11 by 17 and go in the field tab. The boundary drawing should get plotted to 11 by 17. It will shrink a little, but that's okay. Plotted to 11 by 17, and it should go in the boundary tab. Okay. And individual sheet protectors. Don't take 12 sheets and stuff it in one sheet protector. Okay. If that's all we have, if, if we can do this and I get hit in a butt by a bus, you guys will be fine. So you'll have a good record of everything we ever did. Okay? But this is a lot of housekeeping. This doesn't just happen. Right? 
and it's like Matilda. Were we doing this on Matilda? No, we were on fire. We were. I was like running around like a chicken that had been doused in gasoline and lit on fire, right? And it's, okay, and it's so when you that's a funny fire. mental image, but that's mm -hmm. kind of how it is, right? So what we're doing now is we're going to go in this week and we're going to do our housekeeping, okay? So Julian's going to do this on Matilda. Matt's going to do both these drawings on 3514 Oak Knoll. And then later this week, Matt will, Matt, depending on who has time, Matt or Julian will help me do it on CRC and Orion Park, okay? All right, was that helpful? Very. All right, what was I going to think of that thought? Um, yeah, it's gone. That happens to me sometimes. Yes? For these field drawings, mm -hmm. um, these are set up for both, right? Like, this is what I use to get the guys kind of when we got to send them back out. Yeah, so, yeah, every time. But this is also something we use when uh, we're trying to set up. Does that make sense? Like we use it for the, the, the beginning and we use it as the project continues. Am I, am I wrong or? This really should get set up after the first field survey. After the when first field When you think survey? what you call field drawing is a field package. Field package. Obviously you get those mixed up, yeah. A field package is separate. Okay. Okay? A field drawing is our first brush with the information that they got in the field. Yeah, the field package, so the first time they go out, they're gonna have a field package. This isn't gonna exist yet because we haven't done any work yet, okay? Is this what we should be using for them to give them if they go back out? After they go out, yeah. this gets plotted for the so they have the control. Okay. Okay, now there's two things that are not in here yet. I'm gonna go do it, I'm gonna eat lunch and then I'm gonna do it so that you because guys have it. The reason why I'm asking yeah. that is because I've put together packages before, Yep. but this is not what I was handing them back afterwards. Like, so like when this is part of your package. Yeah. So they still get what I call the, we'll do another class on field packages, okay? But the field package has what I call the survey plan. Mm -hmm. That's either control survey plan, boundary survey plan, or topo survey plan, okay? Or monitoring survey plan. Like, because what does Hunter need? To know what a plan. Step by step plan, to do his okay? <laughs> That's the survey plan exhibit. This goes in with that plan. This is not, it's not part of the plan, but it's attached with the plan. Afterwards, yeah. This is, Hunter, we've already been to this job three times, here's your control. Gotcha. Okay? Okay, so there's two, th I just realized there's two things that aren't in here. I'm gonna add a couple sheets. One is gonna be for notes on adjustments. So if we've done a network adjustment or a traverse adjustment or whatever, there should be some notes in here on who did it and what the results were. We don't have that on. I'm just gonna add a sheet. And then I'm gonna add a sheet that's gonna say, uh, I don't know what I'm going to call it yet, but what I would like is a, a sheet. I mean, maybe we'll try and do, I don't know if we're going to do one per sheet. Maybe I'll do one per sheet, but well, this is 11 by 17. I might get two per sheet. I would like a sheet that has two photos of each control point with a little short written description. We don't have that right now, right? So like, you know, it's a mag nail, but I've been making these guys take photos of all their control. We should have a close up and a wide angle and you print that out, I ought to be able to print that out, hand it to a good surveyor, and he ought to be able to go find everything, right? Because he's got the map in the front, so the map's gonna tell him, hey, there's a monument right here on this corner. Then he's gonna have a photo, and he says, ah, it's two feet south of the catch basin, and it's a mag, right? And he ought to be able to go find it. Well, that's not in here yet, but I'd like to do that. So, supposedly, Steve, the last time he was out to Valley Street, took photos of all his control. Supposedly. Supposedly. So if you did, you're going to help me do that. And Hunter's out today at Nueva. He's taking photos of all his control. And we're going to do that. Hunter is not allowed back in this office without photos of control points he sets. Period. If, if he does, I'll break his fingers. Okay? Because here's the problem. Do I get to consistently same, send the same field crew back to a job site? No. Like, that's like I got a 50-50 shot of that happening. Right? Okay. And like I've been the guy out there looking for stuff. Trust me, those two pictures save they could save an hour easily. Even if all they did was just drop a little tar, because I've seen it blow out. Yeah. Oh, oh, and you're looking right at it. Like yeah. Wandy. Yeah. yeah. It just creates. Just havoc. could save a lot of time. A lot of time. Okay. So I'll I'll come up with something that we can just drop into here. Drop in a couple photos and just some basic information on the control point. Okay. Can we um. Cause like, I guess I'm digging a little bit too deep, but like, 
the pro a problem I've had in the past that affects something like this is we go out several different times and we shoot different sets of control or we tie into existing control that we set yeah. or some other kind of control that's out there. Yeah. When you come in back into here to update this, yeah. that sounds like a nightmare. Getting all those point files and getting everything in. Do you have a system for that? Yeah, do it every time. Do it every time? Every, it's, no, seriously, if we do it every time the crew goes out, yeah. then it's not a nightmare, right? Well, okay, do you know why Old County's a nightmare? Old County's a nightmare. Well, shouldn't we have to, I mean, I feel like we should keep track of that too, though. Like What? Like, keep track of what? Keep, like every time we go out and up, it have to update this drawing? Yeah. Because what if they set up on the same control that they used the first time? Okay, yeah, so you only update with new control points or destroyed control points. Well, what if there was discrepancies between the control that was out there the first time you went and then when they went back to get up there? Okay, again? they should... They, that's a that's a different problem that should okay. get handled before we even leave TBC. Okay. Right? That's your flags. You're checking your flags. Right, right. right? Part of the reason why our control is such a mess is because we don't do this. So when a guy goes out, he can't find the control point he needs. So what does he do? Sets new ones and resets. Sets a new one three feet away. And then, like now on the way, though, I got 15 control points and none of them fit together because we've half baked it from the very well, beginning. Well, just like that Merced Topo, like, he. I don't know who was out there, Kobe. He set the control point up literally right next to the first and sixty control point. Yeah. Like it's no bueno. And just called it a different number. No bueno. So like what do we use? But we Yeah. That's so what I'm saying. Like, bad practices. So this is part of how we fix that problem. Right? Okay. Because if I send a guy out and he sets something a foot away from a point that I later find, he's gonna buy the whole office pizza and beer. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, so you guys understand now what a field drawing is, what a boundary drawing is, right? We should have one on every project. Love it. Okay, so I will get this. Give me a little bit of time. Get this template cleaned up. I'll add those two things I want to add. And then we'll get Elena to the point where you should be able to tell Elena, Elena, here's a folder with the control points. And here's the information you need for the last sheet. Datum, information, all that. And she should just be able to go do this. And we should be able to get these things to 95% fairly easily under budget in Landon's hands, right? Yeah, exactly. this is just, it's just housekeeping, Keep right? At the end of the day, we save money. Uh, this saves us money on any, any job where we got return trips. So, And listen, even those jobs where you think you're not going to have a return trip, what happens? A year later, the engineer calls and says what? Do we ever have any of those jobs here? I need this. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, oh, hey, we forgot. We need you to go 100 feet down the road and get that catch basin. Yeah. There's a manhole that was, you know, two two intersections up that you guys didn't get when you were in the field. Right, right? yeah, that. <laughs> you didn't shoot the, the finished floor of the hotel two blocks away from the job site or whatever. Then we got to go back, right? Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, so I got to do this, and then I got a proposal to work on. Gustavo, why don't you, what are you doing? Uh, This now. For which job? What's other? Can he shadow you? Yeah. Shadow Julian. Okay. He's going to go through this and you guys will be bugging me anyways, but you can shadow Julian until somebody comes up with something. Okay. Yeah. Since you're a construction guy, what I might do is Hunter's doing some control on Nueva. When he gets back, maybe I'll have you help me do this field drawing for Nueva. Okay. Okay. All right. We're going to still get some. Yeah, I don't know. We might. We'll see. We'll see how it might. That could, that's a possibility. That might happen. All right, cool. We'll do some more training this week. So if nothing else, tomorrow we'll get together and do some CAD training. I'll show you guys how to work with a layout grid. Okay. Oh, by the way, if you come in here and thaw all your layers, oh, there is, there's something else I want to teach you guys, so hang on. If you thaw all your layers, there's a layout grid. Oh, my God. Please use it. Okay, don't not use the layout grid. <laughs> Okay. If you just edit the notes that are already there, you shouldn't have to mess with the layout grid. Okay, let me show you guys. Do you guys know how to use layer states? Okay, I'm going to teach you about layer states. Okay, layer states. We're going to have layer states in all our drawings. I just been using AutoCAD for 20 years. I just started. I just learned about layer states and started using them because I bought AutoCAD book. And I'm trying to improve my skill set a little bit. Okay, so if you drop this down on your ribbon, you can go right here to manage layer, state, layer states, okay? 
And so most of our work product drawings are going to have two layer states. They're going to have grid and text alignment, and they're going to have plot ready. Okay. So let me just show you what you can do with a layer state. So if I'm ready to plot, instead of having to go in and freeze and unfreeze all the layers I need to plot, I can just go in and say, plot ready. Boom. So for each layer, you just set it up whether it's plot ready. So it's a layer state. What it is is it saves all your current layer settings. Sweet. Okay. So you come in here and say, all right, now now I'm, I did plotting, but I forgot a note. So now I need my, my alignment lines back on so I can put my note in the right spot. Oh, all right. Boom. There's your other layer state. Okay, now let's just say, I don't know, we may decide we want some more standard layer states, like maybe, so let's just say, let me show you an example. Okay. Maybe we want a layer state that only shows line work and bearings and distances. Okay. Like maybe you're checking your Kogo or whatever. So you just, here's what you do. You go, you go in and you freeze all the layers you don't want. doesn't like must be the current layer. Hey, it won't let me make zero current. Oh my god. There's a bunch of stuff on zero. <laughs> Wonder who did that. <laughs> this isn't even on the right layer. This is such a mess. Oh my god. Alright. Let's try this. <sighs> yeah, I get in trouble. Let's call it a. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Let's call it baselines only. Baseline work only. Okay. So once you have your layers the way you want, you come in here and say okay. Okay, and then it frees, it grabs whatever your current layers are, and that just saves your, it snapshots your layer settings. Okay, we should make that an official one too. We should do these three. I like that's pretty cool. Okay, so for, I, it'll take some time, but we'll go through all our drawing templates and we'll add these three layer states. Name them the same. Okay, but layer states are super. I've been, I'm super stoked about using them. They're very cool. Okay, so you guys may think about some other layer states that you want, whatever. Just let me know, we'll add them. Okay? All right, cool. We good? Oh, yeah. All right, we'll do some more training tomorrow. Sweet. Fill packages? Uh, I want to do some drafting training. Maybe we'll do fill packages Friday or Wednesday. 10-4. Remind me. Gustavo, make a note. You can remind me. Field package training on Wednesday. All right, cool. I gotta go do a proposal. I gotta go figure out what happened to my boundary. Uh oh. First, I gotta fix this. Do you need me to look at something, Matt? Or? No. All right. It got tweaked somewhere in the since I tweaked it. Yeah. And now I'm putting it back together. So okay. The notes are all updated. It's just resolving a boundary that wasn't mine to begin with. All right. You know what that's like. Yep. It's happened to me before. <laughs> Yeah, I'll pause it. Thank you.